Hey, what's going on, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope we're having a wonderful day out there, and we've got a pretty active day ahead as our next winter storm begins to really get its act together and start dropping snow for a lot of folks today, and that won't be the end of it. That snow will continue into tomorrow and even into this weekend with another shot of brutally cold Arctic air. Now, that's not the only thing we're discussing today. We also have another storm system we're watching next week uh, that could bring a lot of ice for some folks, snow for others, and maybe even thunderstorms as well. Uh, so we're going to continue this active pattern in January for sure. Over really, I think the next um, couple of days, I think next week will be a little bit of a lull. Obviously, we'll, uh, excuse me, we will have storms to track. I just think a little bit less on the wintry side before going into February. I think we once again crank up uh, that winter weather machine for a lot of folks to kind of end out the second half of winter. Uh, and now, if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing. Like the video if you like it and comment. Let me know where you're watching from. Uh, again, I will mention, I mentioned this on Tuesday. Tuesday and Thursdays are just tough for me in terms of you know getting video uh, excuse me making these videos any longer than uh, they are uh, so I am cutting the um, kind of viewer photo submissions just for these two days I promise I'll have it back tomorrow uh, and uh, all the f uh, pictures I got submitted yesterday expect to see those in tomorrow's video as well as whatever else uh, you submit uh, kind of in today's video but again I just have to get up super early Tuesdays and Thursdays for class uh, so to kind of minimize uh, how long this takes and get as much sleep as possible I'm going to just kind of focus on the weather here and now with that said, let's go ahead and jump on into it because again, uh, we do have a good bit on going out there and the main piece that we're watching here is uh, already kind of beginning to get its act together over much of the central part of the country. That's kind of one piece of our storm system. It's not the only piece. We also have some energy down here to the south uh, that is going to work north throughout the day today and eventually these two pieces of energy are going to connect right over really the Kentucky, Tennessee area uh, and lead to a pretty nice snowstorm for a big swath of the Ohio River Valley and into the northeast, including some folks that really haven't seen all that much snow so far this winter. And uh, you can see that here on our watches, warnings, advisories, and uh, even radar imagery. We already do have some light snow showers here uh, from St. Louis up through Indianapolis and Detroit falling this morning. Uh, nothing major, and in fact, that's not even really our storm system. It's just kind of um, a little piece of energy here out in front. But because of that, uh, we have a lot of areas that have uh, these kind of uh, winter weather advisories in the purple and even winter storm warnings. Uh, in the pink there, again, as the storm system continues to crank up those impacts uh, uh, increasing throughout much of today. Now back out into the Rocky Mountains, up into specifically the northern part of the Rocky Mountains, we also have winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories, and uh, even a couple winter storm watches there for multiple uh, rounds of snow throughout the next couple of days that are going to work on through. And then hard freeze warnings in effect from Alabama down through Mississippi and the Florida Panhandle, as again, we're still dealing with this very cold air in place for a lot of folks. All right, let's go ahead and time out this storm and uh, give you the latest information we have. Here we go. This is about uh, 11 o'clock to noon this afternoon. This is when things really unfold. Here's our northern piece of energy now dumping snow through much of South Dakota here. And here's our southern piece of energy working north. And now we're beginning to see freezing rain falling. Uh, through central uh, and specifically um, uh, eastern Arkansas there into northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, and into much of Tennessee by the time we get into this afternoon. All right, moving this ahead a little bit, this is about 3 o'clock. Now that northern piece of energy dropping snow over Iowa, sections of eastern Nebraska, southeastern South Dakota, and southern Minnesota, uh, seeing some of that snow falling. And now that freezing rain picking up in intensity a little bit here over the Tennessee area. And uh, again, that could definitely cause some problems that we need to watch out for. Uh, travel's already been a nightmare through Tennessee really all week due to this very cold air and leftover snow. Uh, this is unfortunately only going to add another layer on top of that during the afternoon and evening hours. And uh, you'll notice this is about the time the sun is going down. We've got a big shield of freezing rain, uh, you know, overtaking much of the Nashville area, southern Kentucky here, uh, even into kind of eastern Tennessee now seeing some of that freezing rain as well. Now, south of there through Alabama and um, kind of Louisiana, Mississippi, Florida, I don't think there's going to be any ice here. It'll definitely be a cold rain. It won't be warm, but it uh, should be warm enough that we see just good old-fashioned rain and uh, not really too much in the way of uh, ice here. Now, as we go into overnight tonight, this is about 10 o'clock Eastern time. This is when our two pieces of energy are going to finally phase together. Here again is that northern stream piece. Here's that southern stream piece. Uh, and uh, this is whenever, again, they're going to finally link up. And we're going to get one piece of energy that then kind of combines both of these shields of precipitation into one. And uh, again, we get more of a good old-fashioned winter storm out here. 
Now, before that happens, this uh, southern piece of energy is going to strengthen a little bit. So you'll notice rain increasing here to the south through Georgia, Alabama, and eventually into the Carolinas over tonight. But also, uh, now snow picking up here into northern Kentucky, and specifically northeastern Kentucky here. Uh, West Virginia, southwest Virginia getting in on some of that snow. And we're still seeing ice here to the south through Nashville, uh, south central Kentucky, back towards Knoxville, seeing some freezing rain likely overnight tonight continuing. Uh, before eventually, here we go, this is about 3, 4 a.m., you'll notice uh, we've got these two pieces of energy now linked up together, and we've got just one low pressure here with a cold front on one side, warm front on the other, snow in the cold area, and uh, just some good old-fashioned rain here on the south side. Uh, so if you're watching in the Carolinas, specifically big cities like Raleigh, Charlotte, uh, back down towards Columbia, Charleston, Florence, even down through Savannah, it's going to be a rainy evening. I think uh, even by the time we're waking up tomorrow for that commute here, um, there will definitely be some leftover rain showers here in the eastern Carolinas uh, and even down into Florida as this front swings on through. Now to the north, though, again, we've got a nice shield of snow likely stretching from uh, sections of Indiana and Michigan all the way out towards the Long Island, seeing some snow here for our Friday morning commute. And that shield of snow going to continue to crank up throughout the day Friday, still snowing good in places like Philadelphia, Trenton, New York City, uh, Baltimore, up through much of Delaware, uh, Harrisburg, Pittsburgh, still seeing that snow as well here. And it's going to continue to crank up throughout the day. Now, it will slowly diminish west to east across the country. Uh, so by the time we get into Friday afternoon, likely dying down a little bit in Ohio, Indiana, Michigan. But we're still snowing good into sections of the northeast. Uh, now, another thing I will mention here on the backside, look at these lake effect bands now setting up shop. Uh, so if the shield of snow is gone and uh, you're still here in sections of uh, kind of the lake areas of Indiana and Ohio, uh, the snow isn't necessarily going to stop. Very strong winds coming down off the lakes here and very cold air is going to lead to plenty of lake effect snow uh, throughout the day Friday and even into our Saturday here. Now going into Friday evening about 5 o'clock, it's still snowing along the I-95 corridor from Philadelphia through New Jersey, New York City, a little bit lighter up towards the Boston area, but likely still snowing before finally the storm system moves away during the overnight hours. And by the time we get to midnight uh, tomorrow night, Friday, going into Saturday, we should clear out through much of the country and really just a very cold night and some lake effect snow through Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio uh, will be left in store here for the rest of the forecast. Now, going into our Saturday afternoon, again, it will be clearer, but I will mention here with one more map, we are going to see that lake effect snow as well as some northwest flow. So you'll notice very, again, strong winds coming off the lakes here. Expect snow to continue in the higher terrains of West Virginia, North Carolina, uh, up through Pennsylvania, Virginia itself, and then, of course, that lake effect snow continuing here uh, throughout the day Saturday here, depicted on Saturday afternoon. Uh, but most of that leftover precipitation should die down by the time we get into Sunday afternoon, and it'll just be downright frigid, uh, but the precipitation chances really should uh, be gone by then. All right, let's look at some snowfall totals here. Again, it is going to snow, as I just mentioned. I think a good uh, three to five inches is pretty likely here through much of central South Dakota and northeastern Nebraska, Iowa, uh, southern Minnesota, likely more of one to three inches for you folks there. Uh, but either way, again, a nice little swath of snow here uh, throughout much of the day today and into overnight tonight. Now, getting into um, this uh, the Midwest, sorry, I definitely know what I'm looking at here. Uh, again, going to see snow here as well, and including some areas of higher pockets of snow thanks to that lake effect snow. <clears throat> Especially here into, I think, um, northwestern Indiana through the Gary area. We could see half a foot to a foot of snow by the time we get into Saturday evening when all is said and done here. Uh, same story for kind of the Cleveland area up here into um, Ohio. Again, a lot of lake effect going to help out our totals there. Now, if uh, you're not lucky enough to get that lake effect snow, and you're just kind of going to get this shield of snow, again, I think uh, a big section here is going to get three inches or so uh, through much of central Indiana, central southern Ohio, and even down into Kentucky should see some snow as well. Uh, now, also the UP of Michigan going to get in big time on that lake effect snow. Uh, not so much the storm system itself, but we could see half a foot to a foot of snow as well for you folks. Again, the wind coming right off the lakes from the north, uh, so that's going to be quite conducive for some snowfall up there. Now, icing going to be a concern as well here. Not off the chart numbers here, but a glaze to a tenth of an inch is definitely going to be enough to cause problems here through much of Tennessee, southern Kentucky, and uh, even sections of uh, extreme uh, eastern Arkansas there could see a glaze of ice throughout the day today. So again, make sure you're taking those precautions if you're driving out in this part of the country. Uh, going to be something you want to watch out for. 
Now, snowfall totals kind of in the mid-Atlantic here and uh, into the Ohio River Valley. Again, I think eastern Kentucky, a good three inches of snow here. It's going to be a pretty nice helping of that snow, a nice big thud of it overnight tonight. Uh, but the real winners, again, going to be in the higher terrains of West Virginia here, where you're going to get snow from the storm system itself and that lake effect and kind of northwest flow, if you will, uh, on the backside. So half a foot of snow, not out of the question for the higher terrains of West Virginia. Uh, now, the lower terrains, more of a three inch or so snow event. Um, of course, depending on elevation, higher elevations a little bit more than that, lower elevations a little bit less than that. Now, same story down here for the North Carolina mountains. Not really going to get much snow from the storm system itself, but that northwest flow could bring a quick couple of inches going into this weekend. The Northeast, again, going to see a very nice uh, swath of snow here. Specifically, I like the Philadelphia area for the most snow here, probably three to five inches for you folks. Uh, again, I think you're going to kind of get um, in on the longest period of snowfall. Uh, so again, uh, pretty good helping there. Uh, into Long Island, again, about three inches. And then lesser totals as you get further north, about one to three inches of snow here through uh, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and southern Massachusetts uh, before all is said and done. Uh, a place like uh, D.C., Baltimore, I think more snow in Baltimore, about 2 to 3 inches. D.C., about 1 to 2 inches. Uh, but again, it's going to snow nonetheless, so uh, very um, exciting for you folks there who have not seen much snow so far this winter. Now, the other uh, kind of big-time story here is going to be those temperatures. Now, this is this afternoon you're seeing. We're rebounding nicely considering uh, what we were, you know, yesterday morning and even this morning where it's still quite cold. Uh, but that freezing line, you'll notice kind of right where we're going to see that snow line. Uh, so, obviously, you know, where we have those freezing temperatures, it's going to, um, you know, have that freezing rain and snowfall. Uh, but it's what happens after this storm system that is the much bigger deal, and that is that uh, very big punch of cold air. Uh, you'll notice as I move this map ahead in time, look at all of this very cold air diving down out of Canada and uh, kind of wrapping into this storm system and uh, again just cooling things down big time and by the time we get into I'm gonna move this head a little bit Saturday morning it's going to be downright frigid again uh, those uh, freezing temperatures getting all the way down towards the Gulf Coast even down through the Florida Panhandle into southern Texas and again it's just gonna be a very cold morning through the Ohio River Valley single digits uh, below zero through the Midwest and then teens and 20s through much of the deep south uh, again, just very cold, and even Saturday afternoon here, uh, not going to be much nicer. A lot of folks are going to struggle to get above freezing here. I now add a couple degrees to what you're seeing on this map, but still, nonetheless, a very cold Saturday. And that continues into Sunday here before um, hopefully going into early next week, we get a little bit of a warm up, and uh, that's depicted very well on our next map here. Uh, this is our 500 millibar height anomaly map, and I think it does a great job at showing what uh, we kind of need to see here. And uh, this kind of shows our troughs and ridges, and this is going into early next week. This is when we need to watch for our next storm system, but also a big time warm up. You'll notice we have a big trough uh, indicated in kind of these uh, isobars that are kinking downwards and that blue, and then a big ridge indicated by those uh, isobars that are kinking upwards or in the red. Uh, so what we're going to get here likely early next week is a big push of warm air in the east out of the uh, south. That's definitely going to warm things up, make it feel like spring. Uh, but we're also getting a trough in the west. That's not necessarily going to cool it down so much as it's going to bring a storm system here uh, through the southern stream of uh, or the southern part of the jet stream, if you will. Uh, so what's very likely to happen, I think, is again, temperatures warming up in the east, but we still got low pressure uh, kind of forming down here near Texas. And what this is going to do is eventually try to ride that boundary up through that ridge. Now, this is going to happen early enough next week that we still have cold air left over. You'll notice high pressure out here to the east. Uh, that's the high pressure that's bringing that very cold weekend air. And unfortunately for a lot of folks, that's not going to have quite enough time to warm up before our next storm system gets here. And we've got an ice storm concern here through uh, really sections of Oklahoma, up through Missouri, Arkansas once again, specifically northern Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. Uh, so this is uh, going into next Monday afternoon, that pink showing up indicating ice, Monday evening continuing there in the St. Louis area, and eventually getting up into uh, the northern part of the country through the Midwest where enough cold air is still left over uh, that we're going to see you know, some wintry precipitation from ice on the southern side uh, to snow on the northern side, and you'll notice we've got another winter event here uh, going into early next week to forecast and watch out for. Now, that won't be the end of it. You'll notice going later on in the week, more rounds of this precipitation move on in, and we could see multiple kind of winter storms up here in the extreme northern part of the Midwest with ice and snow, uh, while we're seeing just good old-fashioned rain in the southeast with maybe even some rumbles of thunder throughout the week. 
Now our blended model shows us pretty well. Again, uh, that ice signal is showing up here from Oklahoma all the way into uh, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin. A little bit too soon to get in depth on totals, but just know the signal is there for some ice. Same story for snow. We've got a snow signal as well here through the northern part of the country from Minnesota all the way over to New York State and even into northern Pennsylvania, uh, where we could very easily get some snow out of this next storm system as well. Now again to the south of there, that warm air is pushing very far north, so it's really just going to be scattered rain throughout the week. Uh, and also some scattered thunderstorms, I think, are not out of the question. This is with that first storm system, lightning flash density on your map here. Uh, again, just showing kind of where we're seeing thunderstorms. Uh, picking up here, going into next Tuesday, and then into next Wednesday, more thunderstorms near the Gulf Coast. And eventually, later into next week, those thunderstorms try to move a little further inland as that warm air moves further inland. And uh, we've got thunderstorms through the southeast, and uh, you know those could last for at least a couple of days here as we really lock in this more spring-like pattern. Uh, now, Climate Prediction Center here, I think, does a great job at showing this. Uh, the probability of above average temperatures through the next six to ten days, uh, really the entire country is going to be above average, but especially the east uh, is going to have the highest likelihood of being well above average here in the temperature department. And again, uh, precipitation not going to be hard to come by as well, as uh, we have that ridge kind of flexing in the east that's going to allow troughing in the west. Storm systems are going to form and uh, kind of ride up and over that ridge. Again, bringing plenty of precipitation through much of the country throughout next week. And again, that includes snow, ice, as well as and maybe just some good old-fashioned kind of spring-like thunderstorms here to end out January. Uh, now, if you're a winter weather lover in the east and uh, you're kind of disheartened by this a little bit, uh, don't worry. I think going into February, we're probably going to flip the pattern back. Maybe not quite as cold as what we're seeing right now, but definitely back more towards the wintry side of things before eventually uh, we get back to full-blown spring going into later March and into April. Alrighty, well again, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found some use in it. If you did, again, definitely like it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, I just appreciate y'all watching. It means a lot to me. And I hope you have a great rest of your Thursday as well. And I'll see you all tomorrow.